Welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware. We're with Bill Fogarty, um, our director in our valve shop. And recently, we actually had our rental partners uh, come in and Bill did a presentation on non-return valves. And I thought, man, this is really, really good. And I want to make sure we bring it to you at Boiling Point. First of all, Bill, why do we even need a non-return valve? Yeah, um, they can be required by the ASME Section 1 code. Uh, and they're commonly called by two different names. One is a non-return valve, the other one is referred to as a stop check valve. Okay. Uh, the boiler folks tend to call them non-return valves. Mm -hmm. um, in the ASME code, what it says is when boilers are connected to a common header, the connection from each boiler having a manhole opening shall be fitted with two stop valves having an ample free blow drain between them. The discharge of the drain shall be visible to the operator while operating the valve. The stop valve shall consist of one stop check valve in a second valve of an outs outside screw and yoke type or two valves of the outside screw and yoke type. So that's from the, that's from the ASME code. Okay. Um, so that's why they're on top of a boiler and there's always two valves as required by the code. Okay. Um, and additionally, they perform several different functions. Um, one is it acts as an automatic non-return valve applied as a containment device to prevent gross backflow of steam from the main header to the boiler in case the boiler fails. Okay. And notice they said gross backflow of steam. They didn't right. say all backflow of steam. Okay. It's a, uh, used to assist in cutting the boiler when ceasing to fire, uh, assist in returning the boiler after a shutdown, and it restricts backflow of steam from the header into the boiler, which has been shut down and accidentally opened. So it has two functions. It's a check valve and it's also a stop check, or also a stop valve, hence stop check. Okay. So we cut this one away because a lot of folks who operate these on a daily basis have never seen the inside of one. Mm -hmm. So this is the valve in the closed position. And here we have a disc and a seat and here's our stem, and our stem is contacting the plug. So this is in the closed position. Okay. When the boiler's operating, this stem rises, and if the flow is sufficient, this plug also rises. Okay. Okay. So normal operations of the boiler, the stem is all the way up. It's not contacting the plug, hmm. and the plug is rising up and the steam exits through this cage. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about uh, some problems we have with these, we see with these valves uh, commonly. Right. And one is that they have to be sized to the application. Okay. Okay. For instance, if we have, I got a, I got a plug and seat here. So this is the plug. Here's the cage and the seat. Okay. Okay. Now the force to open this valve is equal to the pressure underneath it in the area. All right. Okay. When the uh, force is sufficient to lift the plug, the plug rises and it'll allow steam to escape. Now, ideally, we want the valve to be fully open. Okay. If a valve is oversized, for instance, this is a four inch valve, this is a six inch valve, if this six inch valve were to be in the same application as this four inch valve, and this four inch valve is properly sized, the, the area of this is much greater. Right. The pressure can be the same. Right. So what can happen is, but we don't have a lot of volume. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the valve will lift. It'll do that repeatedly. And right. eventually the seats wind up getting pretty well beat up. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And they leak. So we recommend that you never depend on this valve as a primary stop valve because you don't know how much this has gone on mm -hmm. if the valve was sized properly. Mm -hmm. So when you shut down your boiler, it's offline. Uh, the re code requires two stop valves. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. They know this one is likely not to, not to, not to close and not to seat up properly. Right. So you want to close this if the boiler's down. That stem comes down and contacts the plug, and you get a, you get a, a tight shut off. Now, if this has been going on for a long time, yeah, 
Not going to be a tight shutoff. It's not going to be a tight shutoff. Okay. So, so in terms of sizing, <clears throat> let me give you some examples. If we have, uh, this is a four-inch valve. Uh, let's say we've got on a 250 uh, horsepower boiler capable of 8,650 pounds per hour. The minimum flow at 90 psi is uh, 6,000 pounds per hour to get this plug all the way up. That's the minimum flow required. Okay. Okay. So if we were to say, well, let's take a look at using a three inch valve. Mm -hmm. The minimum flow on that same boiler is 3,500 pounds. Okay. Gotcha. Now the drop across this valve, at, uh, the valve at, in a four inch size is three PSI in a three inch size is nine PSI. Because the valve smaller, we're gonna have more of a drop, but we're keeping it open more. Okay. Okay, now if we have the same valve operating on the same boiler at 120 PSI, the minimum flow is 7,000 pounds per mm. hour. Okay. So how often do you run a, a 250 horsepower boiler at 220, P, 220 horsepower? Not right. often. Not often. So right. this valve will be doing this if you're running at 40% load. Gotcha. It'll be beating itself up. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so it's important to review the sizing, mm -hmm. especially after your conditions change. Sure. If you're operating at 120 psi, now you're operating at 100 or at 85 psi. Mm -hmm. It's important to go back and look at the sizing on these valves. Now, as far as from an installation standpoint, I mean, is there just a certain way that the manufacturers say you need to install these? Yeah, there there are. Uh, this valve is a, is a, what we call an angle pattern because the flow comes up and out the valve. They also make a straight pattern, which just goes straight through the valve. Mm -hmm. um, typically in an angle pattern, the flow runs out to a header and then drops into the header. That's okay. typically. Normally we don't see this where it comes out and goes up to the next stop valve and then rises up to a header. Um, if we do, whether it's an angle pattern or a straight pattern, uh, if this valve is in the, let's say for instance, you just put a brand new valve in and the valve is fully open and it's seating off because these valves will provide some pretty good shutoff initially. Right. It doesn't last long, but initially they will. <clears throat> if we have this discharge, the discharge header going straight up and this valve is in the open position, this plug is closed, we're liable to get, we will get condensate building up on the back side of this valve. Mm -hmm. And if the valve's called to open, then we're gonna push all that condensate into the header. That's not a good idea. Okay. So typically what we recommend doing is on the vertical discharge header to put a trap coming off the side of the header. And that way it'll drain that condensate. It won't drain it all, right. but it'll drain a bunch of it. Okay. Um, and additionally, a lot of these valves will have plugs. These have been cut out. There's a drain plug here and a drain plug and a, and a vent plug here. Uh -huh. And they're both above the seat. And that's to provide that free blow drain that they were, uh, the code was referencing. Okay. okay. So, um, uh, but there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of problems associated with these valves. Primarily, a, a lot of it has to do with back in the day when boilers were capable of a three to, three to one or four to one turn down and the valve is properly sized in operating the original conditions, this plug would rise up and everything would be, it may not be fully open, but it may be open enough, it's not gonna do that. Right, right, okay. right, right. But now we've got burners that are capable of 10 to one turn down, okay? Mm -hmm. It's well in excess of what this is capable of. This is at best of three and a half to four to one turn down okay. under the best of conditions. And if, if that's the case and you're destroying these valves because of that, right. then there are other valves that provide a much better turn down, 10 to 12 to one oh, okay. that are better matched. They're more expensive, mm -hmm. but it's pretty expensive to be tearing these valves up on a frequent basis. Sure, sure. So, so is there anything from a maintenance standpoint um, that you can do when these are just sitting for you know a long time. Is there anything that that can be done? No, I mean the, the best thing is to make sure if it's going in a vertical header that you you've got it, the header trapped. Okay. Okay. Um, they should be inspected periodically. This one, this this seat, you can see how corroded that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. That valve wasn't out for a long time. Yeah. And and so they couldn't possibly expect good shut off from that. Right. So, you know, they should be looked at periodically, particularly if you see any. Packing leaks or bonnet leaks, mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty good indication that the rest of the valve is needing attention. Sure. Okay. All right. Any other things that you want to talk about or got it all covered? Do you think? have any uh, 
uh, needs for these, we represent a bunch of different manufacturers, oh, okay. so we can we can help out. Uh, like I say, if the the three to four to one turn down doesn't work, we have valves that'll do much better turn down than that. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. Talk a little bit about the non-return valves. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time on the Boiling Point. Appreciate Bill hanging out with us today. Talk a little bit about the non-return valves. If you haven't uh, got enough of that, you get some more right there. So you see that these things get beat up pretty good. Now we're inside one of our bays where we have lots of non-return valves um, right here. And like I said, we were in the partner um, uh, rental meeting that we had. And when Bill talked, I thought, man, this would be a great boiling point. So hope you, hopefully you, you learned something. Well, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you like our videos, please share them. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.